is um, these so these dancers are Kizomba, Semba, and Kuduro. Born in Angola, he was introduced to the art of dancing through salsa as a young boy. He then came to Canada, where he graduated in political science with honors from York University. Dealing with people, countries meant that commerce was also part of the curriculum. That's where Mr. Joe Santos decided to build a business plan following him to promote his culture to his craft dance. Today, Dr. Kizomba Canada Studio is a Canada Studio is a dance studio owner that you can teach her, and we, he will introduce you to African dances and how art history and culture collide to keep a world that is unknown to most while shining a positive light on country and continent that gave birth to endless treasures. Please help me to welcome Dr. Kisoma. Hi, how are you doing? Yeah, okay, yeah. Yo, make me feel a little relaxed because it's my first time, okay? I never thought, uh, yeah, I did university, but I was just going to university because of my mom, okay? Yeah, my mom is from Angola, and she actually, uh, we actually have to have some kind of degree uh, before choosing our hobby because my hobby was dancing and I became a business. But I had to do kind of political science and stuff like that, and that helped me actually create my business, okay? And thank you so much, Dr. Noka, for your putting. Give us a round of applause. <laughs> she told me about what you guys would like to hear. She told me about the experience that you guys want to hear about the diaspora, the Africa, Okay, I'm gonna tell you guys a little story, and then you guys are gonna uh, kind of ask me the question, and then I'm gonna do the first dance. Okay, these are my two partners right there. I got Ida. I got beautiful Misha right there. Okay, Ida, beautiful. Mm -hmm. You see Ida now? You see her face, all right? Yeah. Okay. And then we also have a special guest. His name is Papa Tony right there. If you guys see the <laughs> I, can, I cannot talk about my country without bringing this man because he's actually uh, a pioneer in my culture community right here in Montreal, which is so small. We actually are more in Toronto because we, we like, we speak Portuguese, but we like English, right? Not to say that we don't like French, right? But it's easier for. I'm getting in trouble right now. Help me right now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah. So basically, Babandini will also be talking, okay? Now, let's go back around the eras before the 70s, okay? This is Angola, all right? The Portuguese basically was our colony for hundreds and hundreds of years. And then basically came uh, the war, okay? We wanted to be independent that there were the Cubans that were helping the current government inside, and then there were the Americans that were collided with, United, uh, with the South Africans to actually take the southern of our country. If you guys don't know Angola, that's uh, southwestern Africa. On the south, you got South Africa and Namibia. On the other side, you got Zimbabwe. On top, you got the Congos, okay? There's two Congos. If you guys don't know the two Congos, you do your homework. You're university student right now, okay? <laughs> so going back to the to the story, around 1975, our war exploded. And then we have to kind of protect our country, but we didn't have kind of a weapon. So we asked the Cubans, but the Cubans came with the help of the Russians, okay? Because the Russians were backing up the Cubans, and then they came and they helped us protect. Someone made, okay, there we go. Good job, girl. No problem. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you too. Come on, my brother. You're not <laughs> sure. You're not you bad, bro. Right. There you go. All right. Come on, my brother. I'm not going to be on you. Let's go. Yeah. Well, what was? Where I was? Russians and the Cubans. There you go, my boy. You're listening. All right. So, okay, so. When the Russians, uh, the Russians came with the support of the Cubans, right, and then it was a big battle around Quito, where uh, Fidel de Castro uh, actually won. All right, was the first time they they're not gonna televise that. That was the first time that the Russians actually won 
against the Americans. But this is not going to be televised because you know Americans, they got to win all the time, right? Not to say if there's any American right here, okay? You lost that battle, all right? Yeah, so going back to that, where the birth of the dances, Samba and Kizomba, that was already part of our culture. But what we did in between, the president at the time, he organized something called Kizombadas, right? Kizombadas is actually, in our traditional language, what we call Kizomba is a party, right? So now, in these Kizombadas, we had to get together and make babies. Because we were dying. Yeah, we were the day. It's sad and funny. Yeah, we were dying, okay? We had to procreate because actually the population was going down because of the war. So uh, millions of people die on that war. And uh, until today, my country still have mines from that. So that that way, some places you cannot walk because you're gonna lose a limb or you're gonna die as well. So you cannot walk around because the territory was around was mining. So we organized the Kizombadas where basically people will get together, will get to know each other, will have babies, and will maintain the population, okay? And through these dances, that was the birth, the birth of Samba, which already was our traditional dances, right? That was the birth of Samba, that was the birth of Kizomba, and at the time, 75 to 80s, Zouk and Kompa, a dance from Haiti, right? was very popular in the market. They had like the cassava that was going all over the world and singing. So we actually brought them to our country to 